This is practice for 9-4. We're going to complete each proportion using this diagram. Segment AD compared with segment AC. This is the left side of the small triangle. Segment AC is the left side of the big triangle. Another way to do this would be to redraw the triangles. So in the last video we looked at, we looked at one strategy. This would be another one. Segment AD corresponds with segment AC. So that's going to be equal to segment AE over that's a B, segment AB. A lot of people like splitting them up better. These two triangles are similar because those are parallel. So if this left side goes with this left side, then this right side goes with that right side. Number two, A to D. That's this left side of the little guy. Compared with segment DC. Now this is the only downside to this diagram. You're comparing this left side to this part of the left side. That's going to be the same thing as A to E compared with this part, E to B. Number three, D to E, that's an entire side, compared with C to B, that's an entire side. So bottom to bottom equals left side to left side. Number four, we have segment AB, that's the right side, compared with segment AE, that's the right side. Right side to right side equals something over DE. It's going to be the bottom. This guy was the bottom, so this will be the bottom too. Number five. Same ratio that we have over here, notice. Right side to right side. That's going to equal A to C, that's the left side, to this left side. A to D. Number six, bottom to bottom, little to big, bottom to bottom, equals something compared to this right side. It's going to be the other right side. Okay, seven through ten, we're looking to find the value for each variable. These triangles are similar because one is inside the other and you have the parallel marks. So we know they're similar to start with. If you didn't know that, you wouldn't be able to do this. Okay, I'm going to compare 4 with 10. That's an entire side, that's an entire side. That's got to be the same thing as this entire side compared with that entire side. Then we're going to cross multiply. 10 times 6 divided by 4. That gives you 15. Number 8. This one's a little bit different. I'm staring at this. I'm not exactly sure what's happening right now. This triangle is isosceles. See how these angles are the same? So if this side is 8, then this side is 8. That's what that means. That's really the kind of the, the key to the problem to making it look like that problem. Okay? This is an entire side. That's an entire side. 4 to 5. Now make sure you do entire side to entire side over here. 8 to x. 8 times 5 is 40. 40 divided by 4. is 10. Number 9. You have similar triangles. That's an entire side. That's a part. That's an entire side. That's a part. You can do that side splitter theorem. x to x plus 2 equals 6 to 9. We're going to cross multiply. Something that will make your job a little bit easier if you reduce this guy to 2 thirds first. That will just make cross multiplying easier. So we're going to do 3 times x 
which gives you 3x. That's going to equal 2 times this quantity, 2x plus 4. We're going to subtract 2x from both sides, so x is 4. Number 10, same diagram. We can use that side splitter theorem we just used in number 9. We'll say that 5 to 3 equals x to 4. 20 divided by 3. That's going to give you a decimal, obviously. Three goes into 26 times with two left over. We're also going to find the value of y. Six to y. That's a ratio of the bottoms, little to big. Let's write a ratio of the left sides, little to big. Five's the little number. Three is not the big number. Eight is the big number. It's the entire side. Okay, so that's a challenging one. One of those ones that if you're going to make a mistake, it's probably going to be there. Six times eight is 48. 48 divided by five is what you're looking for. So 48 divided by five, obviously going to give you a decimal, 9.6. We wrote that guy as a mixed number. Maybe we should do that here, too. Um, five goes into 48 nine times, clearly, uh, with three left over.